the Samsung people. All y'all Android mothers, get on the floor and flip. Flip, I said. What you trying to play with, my homie? Yeah, your phone don't flip. Flippy floppy, my phone's all day. Yeah, the screens are trip. Come on now, it's not 2018. Phone screens aren't just a dream. We tech people got one. Can you run long? What you got proof for another Samsung? in the house you already know what we all about flipping phones like i'm flipping bars on them we run unfiltered like uncut gems flipping cams and tech all day and night ripping the full one sick views all right now flip it flip it good Okay, so this is honestly one of the most out of my comfort zone things I've done. Um, <laughs> but yeah, all right, let's get started. What is up, guys? My name is Tosif Zane, and today we're talking about the Galaxy. And if you're part of the majority of the English world, Z Flip. Or if you're American, Z Flip. Or if I was part of the Samsung marketing team, what I would have probably gone with is the Galaxy Flip missed opportunities. Now I gotta say, my first impressions of this phone were as if I was a kid again. And you know when everything in tech is new and exciting, every single year there was like a breakthrough or an innovation in technology that made smartphones exciting. There was something always new happening almost every single year. I was basically a kid with eyes wide open and a deep smile, and that's what it felt like. That's what it felt like seeing innovation in the tech space again after ages. It felt good. Here is my review of the Galaxy Z Flip. I gotta say, the first time you lay your eyes on this beauty, you're instantly taken aback. It, like, it feels like you're living in the future somewhere. You start scratching like at the middle of the screen where the screen bends and then you flip it back and forth again and again and cool. again. It's really quite surreal. And if you're anything like me, and it's your first time seeing a folding display altogether, then you'll be in for quite a treat. But as with any honeymoon period, this too came to an end. I started using it as my daily driver, and the pros and cons became quite apparent, quite quickly actually, just over a few days. And I have a few thoughts on the matter, so let's break it down. Let's first talk about the main selling feature of this, this whole thing. It's the screen. And I honestly thought before I actually picked up the phone and placed the order, the phone, the area where like the screen bends, is gonna be quite annoying. And that's what I thought. However, I was pleasantly surprised to see that that wasn't the case. Yes, when you're looking at the screen from certain angles, the bend is quite evident. Like you can tell there's something there. And yes, when you run your fingers over it, like if you're scrolling or something like that, you're gonna feel that dip. But honestly, after using it for quite some time, the vast majority of the time you're using it, you don't even realize that it's there and it becomes quite normal. It becomes part of the experience, especially when you are looking at the phone as a normal person does, which is like at the usual angle, like however you guys hold your phones, um, then you don't really see it. On top of that, after a day of usage, it becomes quite negligible. In fact, it's been several weeks now and I still can't get over the fact that I can do this. I literally sometimes put the phone down at this particular angle on a table or wherever, or even if I'm just holding it in my hand and I scroll this way, just and just stare at it. It adds zero functionality to it or ease of use by doing this, but I can't help myself. I just, I just love seeing that. Just seeing everything bend this way, like it's an inception or something like that while scrolling is super cool. But I gotta say one thing I noticed about the screen and that is it doesn't really feel like glass when you're using it. It feels like you threw on like this like plastic screen protector. Um, not sure how it would do with scratches or anything like that, but I wasn't willing to find out. This thing's too expensive. 
In terms of the body, the bezels are actually quite thick, but to be honest, that didn't bother me that much. In fact, it felt quite sturdy and safe in my hands. And using the phone on a regular basis, you quickly come to realize that the bezels are quite necessary. So I don't think they're gonna go away anytime soon in future iterations. It is however in a nice black metallic color that makes it look quite premium. As for the hinge, it really feels quite sturdy and strong. And at no point did I feel uncomfortable using it or like flipping it back and forth. I think they did a really good job on this one, even though it's Gen 1. As for the back of it, I absolutely love this colorway, and I think it really gives this phone the look that it deserves. Now, when the phone is actually in your hands, it feels quite sturdy and overall like an expensive phone that it is, by the way. But the form factor is actually quite a bit taller, so one-handed usability laterally is actually quite tough, but I really like the width of the phone, which makes one-handed usability horizontally quite a bit easier. Now, while the phone is open laying flat on the table or it's in your hands, the phone's not really that thick. It's pretty much about the same size as any other flagship that you've come to expect. Now, when you have the phone closed, it pretty much exactly resembles a compact makeup box. But besides that, the phone becomes pretty thick as you're pretty much doubling the width of the phone. Okay, now that we've discussed the screen on the inside, let's quickly get into the screen on the outside. The phone features a tiny display on the outside where you can double tap to wake it up and it'll basically show you things like the time, the date, the battery percentage, and you can also kind of scroll by swiping your finger on it um, to the side to see what notifications you have. But you can't really do anything with it. You can like click on a notification and it'll show it bit by bit, but at that point I lost all patience and you might as well just flip that phone open and get that shot of dopamine at least of flipping that phone. I do think there's room for growth here and I think in the future iterations of this phone, I can see Samsung kind of making the screen bigger and bigger until it's full size to the front of the phone when it's folded. You can also activate the camera while the phone is closed and you can see a small, tiny, cut up version of yourself in the screen below. Now, it's not something that you're gonna use regularly, but it's nice to know that you have the option to. Okay, now I'd like to talk about the user experience of it all because some things just aren't about the physical. Now, using this phone legit made me receive a little more unwanted attention. No matter where I went with it, like if I was on the train, obviously pre, uh, pre whatever's happening now, it was always the talk of the table. Everybody wanted to see it, to hold it, pre-current health issues that are ongoing as well, to feel it. So one thing's for sure, people are definitely curious about it and they're excited. And by far, the best feeling in the world is when you finish a call or you finish using your phone and you snap it shut. Okay, cool. My goodness, my goodness, that sound, that feeling is addictive. I legitimately think that you get a release or like a shot of dopamine every single time you do it because it just feels so damn good. And the phone actually feels so well made that you can actually comfortably keep doing it without feeling afraid of it just like like exploding in your hand because of the amount of times you're fidgeting with it. However, overtime usage of the phone made me realize something. Every single time I wanted to check my phone, I literally had to go through an extra step in the process. So even doing something as basic as taking a call or texting someone requires me to pull out the phone, flip it open, unlock it, and then do whatever I need to do. Even to simply just check my notifications, I gotta use both hands and I gotta open the phone and then unlock it and then check it, which got kind of inconvenient over time. But the silver lining there is that I was actually more focused on the tasks that I was doing. Cause I mean like the added inconvenience of opening my phone up every single time I just wanted to see a notification meant while I was working, I just put it off until later. So it's like, I'm working, notification goes off. I'm like, uh, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna open that thing right now. So I'll just continue working. So in a way, the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip actually made me more efficient. Now the question comes, is this sort of form factor or tech even necessary? Like in this particular shape? Personally for me, I don't see a use for it for myself. Now I'm sure there is a customer, a consumer out there that prefers this sort of smaller packaged phone such as this, but in today's day and age, after so many years of having so many plus sized phones in my pocket, uh, and in fact, Samsung leading the charge on this, producing, like pushing the boundaries on the size of phones for the longest time, I honestly don't mind a larger form factor phone. But for me personally, I would actually quite prefer the form factor of the 
Samsung Galaxy Fold, which I'd be super interested in checking out. So Samsung, if you're watching this, hook a boy up. Having a phone the size that we're already used to now in today's day and age, but it opens up to something that is encroaching tablet territory, I'm here for that. On another note, another concern I had was that I couldn't quite figure out a use case for this sort of folding device, other than someone wanting a smaller package in their pocket. One potential use case that I will actually admit is quite useful, uh, having tried it, is using the front-facing camera for any sort of selfie or video chat. I can just place the phone on a table and point the camera at myself, kind of like a laptop, which makes it quite easy to use. So let's say you're chatting with family, especially in today's day and age with everything happening and we're self-isolating. Let's say you want to chat with your entire family, you can just put up the phone like a laptop on a table and bam, you're done, you're set. So in conclusion, all in all, I think Samsung did a really good job in building a first generation, sturdy, mass production, consumer friendly folding screen phone. And as with many other first gen products, I feel that this is something that will appeal more so to early adopters of the tech of folding screens. And the price tag of $1,380 USD makes sure of that as well. That's pretty darn high for a smartphone. And until this technology of folding phones becomes more prevalent among society, I think we can expect to keep paying these sort of premium price tags in order to help cover the R&D that went into designing and making these phones. I am super impressed with this phone, how sturdy it is, how they were able to create like a folding device for the mass market consumer. And it, it really pushes the bounds in terms of innovation in tech that we haven't seen in a very long time, which is why I think this is a super important device for Samsung. And I'm really glad that they did something like this. And for the right audience, I can definitely see people appreciate this phone more. It's just for me, I would much rather prefer the form factor of the Galaxy Fold. That being said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this matter. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. Now, before I do my outro, I just wanna give a special, super thankful shout out to my friends Isaac and Patrick for really helping me out with this. And also to Spiron and my wife for helping me shoot some of the sequences of me doing random stuff. So thank you so much, guys. This video would not have been possible without you guys. So make sure you guys go ahead and check out their socials and their channels in the description down below. And I hope this video was informational, beneficial, and entertaining for you guys and if it did if it did suit your fancy and you like the intro that we did for you guys as well then make sure you guys go ahead and crush that like button and if you like content around tech gadgets filmmaking and lifestyle and also random intros and random stuff which apparently I've been doing a lot more like even in my last video check out the intro you're gonna laugh um, then make sure you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button and as usual I will see you guys in the next one peace okay boom <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Look at that. I'm gonna keep this as a prop. If I get a million views, this is gonna be a prop on my shelf. Yeah. This is not safe. <laughs> Get more gangster, thugged out. Okay, I'm good. I'm in character. Come on, Hefe, let's do this. <laughs> I mean, you can't laugh. <laughs> it's gotta be serious. Is that a limbo? I don't know what that is. What the heck is that? I've seen it on TikTok, so I'm just doing it, okay? <laughs> Are you done? Please tell me that's all you're... Oh my god.